You know, and you believe you can't all the, all the more than you believe that you can because you know what you used to do in your past. And so then you got your friends saying, you finna tell me about Christ and you used to turn up with me every Friday night. You finna tell me about Christ and you was the biggest liar on the block. You finna tell me about Christ and you was the one that committed so many sins and so many acts of, uh, of, of adultery or whatever it is that you've been doing. How are you going to tell me something? Has anybody else got some friends and family like that? And so they cause you to stay stuck and not be able to see spiritually. But today, God wants you to see. Amen. Amen. Okay, so what happens is the reason, another reason why you're not able to see spiritually is because you've been prejudged. Can you take me to verse number two? I'm sorry, mommy. You've been prejudged by your obvious ailments from the spectators and the saints. Come on, come on. Uh, verse number two says that uh, his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? Good. This man or his parents that he was born blind. Now, usually when they come to someone that needs a healing or needs something done, there haven't really been many questions that I could find out in the text, Apostle. And so this time they asked the question because they prejudged this man based on his obvious ailments. You follow me? You see me sitting here, so it's obvious that I have some health issues. That's the truth. But that's the fact. But the lie is that this ailment that you see will prevent me from producing my destiny. <laughs> Billboard, a testament of his goodness and mercy, and it didn't matter what you did. Yes. Aren't you glad that this time it didn't matter what your parents did? We talk about generational curses a lot. Aren't you glad it didn't matter what your parents did? Aren't you glad that it didn't matter that you've been afraid that you caused that he could have caused your fear for him to say, nah, I'm gonna save her this time? Aren't you glad that he stopped by where you were so that you could see yes. anybody glad? Yes. Yes. Okay, so he stopped by and he said, none of this. My father's work needs to be done, and I'm only here for a short time, so I'm going to do this because it needs to be done for others to see who he really is. Shout, I'm about to see. I'm about to see. The next thing that I want you to understand is that what he did this time around was different from what he had done before. He could have touched him, and he could have opened his eyes. He could have spoke, and his eyes could have been opened, but he decided to do something unusual. Shout, unusual. Oh, because as we like to think, God wanted to show, Christ wanted to show that he is not in a box. <laughs> he had already performed some miracles and stuff, but he wanted the world to see, I ain't got to never do the same thing the same way twice. Yeah. We always talk about we the out of the box church because we got some praise teams and some praise dancers, but actually you're not out of the box because you weren't willing to do the unusual things that he called you to do because you've been nervous and afraid and it was uncomfortable for you. Oh my God. <laughs> You're only out the box when you realize that you need to do something different and get a little dirty. Somebody shout, get a little dirty. Yeah. You got to get a little dirty when it comes down to the things of God. But no, we don't want to get dirty. <laughs> we don't want to be touched in an unusual way. Because actually, if we be honest, in our, in our, our life of sin, we've been touched in some unusual way. Yes. And so now we're bound up and we don't want to be touched no more in unusual ways. Because the last time it hurt us. But here's what God said. The last time it was from man, but this time, this touch is from Jesus. And he's the one that can heal everything that you've ever experienced in your past. Somebody shout glory. Glory. I'm ready to see. I'm ready to see. And so this month, um, actually last month, because we just started this month. Last month, I believe maybe the end of October, the Lord spoke to me that he was about to do some unusual things in my life. And I'm like, Father, I'm already trying to do what it is that you called me to do this far. And I don't know if I want to do anything else different. I'm already being persecuted because I've, I've been called to do a mobile church. I'm already being persecuted because I, I'm breaking away from the traditionalisms of church that I know. I'm already being persecuted because what I'm doing as far as ministry doesn't look normal to that natural life. So God is saying, you're going to do something else unusual? Well, like he said, yes, because it's the unusual thing that's going to bring about my promise. So used to doing things the normal way, you're so used to pleasing people, and you're so used to making sure that everybody else around you is okay. So you're walking lightly, and you're treading lightly, and they say you're compromising, and you're dumbing down the anointing on the inside of you because you don't want to make others mad and you don't want to shake up some stuff. But God says He's about to shake up some stuff in your life and cause the unusual to happen if you can see spiritually. Because if you
if you see it spiritually, you'd understand, right? Am I, am I helping anybody? Okay, so uh, I'm going to give you an example. Can I talk? Can I tell a story? If possible? Do I have your permission? I'm going to give you an example about something unusual. We got some children in here. Most of them are mine. So um, it is at viewers discretion to advise on this story. But I'm going to tell you this story. Uh, I was pregnant with my fourth child, Jacob. Raise your hand, Jacob. And at that time, when I first got pregnant, everybody was saying, um, oh, this is going to be great. This is baby number four. You know how to do this. You've had three before. It's going to be so easy. Matter of fact, the more children you have, the easier it gets. I, I can't stay in pain. So I'm like, Lord, it was fun making them, but I don't like having them. <laughs> so now I've got to go through this pain all over again. We don't think about that when we have having fun. And so they're like, no, you're going to be good because the more that you have these children, the easier the labor becomes. You follow me? I got some mamas in here, okay? And so um, I'm like, okay. So the first thing unusual that happened was I went through all the blood tests and everything that you do when you go to your um, prenatal care appointments. And um, they, the doctor took me in a room after some test results came back and he said, well, I got some bad news. Um, your baby has Down syndrome. And I said, what? He said, your baby has Down syndrome. And so um, my husband was at work at that time and he said, I need you to talk to your family because I, and I need you to talk to some counselors because I need you to consider whether you're going to go ahead with the pregnancy. And so I'm like, okay. Number one thing, unusual, you following me? Okay, I'm going back to the text in a minute. And so I went home and I cried. I'm like, how can this be? This has never happened to me before. I've already had three. They've been perfectly healthy. This has never happened before. Now why do I have a baby that I'm carrying and having Down syndrome? Are you sure? He has Down syndrome? Absolutely. The test results are very high. He does have Down syndrome. You can have an amniocentesis done to confirm it, but I'm telling you because of the numbers that I see, it's there. So I went to my family and I went to the church and we began to pray. And we decided we're not going to terminate our baby. Sorry, we searching about Down syndrome and saying that the lifespan was only to the age about 21 was that right day and we started praying and declaring that this baby shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. We named him Jacob because the Lord told us he was going to have to fight before I even got the test results about him being Down syndrome. Okay, And so that was unusual to us and I walked and I can't say that I wasn't scared. I worried. I stopped eating everything. I stopped drinking everything. I became extra protective because this was something unusual that I had never experienced before. Now now it's time for me to give dirt to the baby. And I had some minor complications, so they said we're gonna have to induce your pregnancy. I'm talking about the unusual thing. I'm getting back to that text in a minute. And the unusual thing happened, so I went and never had been induced in labor before, never been through it before, never felt this kind of pain being induced with the medicine that they make your body do something that it's supposed to do naturally on its own. So it's unusual for me to have to experience this. I go in on a Friday and I get it all started. And Friday night, I labor all along, and it hurt so bad, and I never felt pain like this before. They told me it was going to be easy, y'all, but this is the worst I'd ever felt. And then all day Saturday, nothing was happening, and they increased the medicine, unusual. I've never experienced it before, and my pain got worse. I'm like, no, I can't go through this like this. I need some pain medication. They said, well, if we give you the pain medication right now, it's going to not take the effect, and we need you to produce this baby. And I'm like, okay, so I got to suffer through pain. Saturday night, nothing happened. I labored all night long. Early Sunday morning, I labored all night long. Nothing happened. So then they said, okay, you can have the epidural. I said, great. I've had epidurals before. I had them with two of the three. They came in, they gave me the epidural, and guess what, y'all? The epidural didn't work. The pain still remained. I'm talking about the unusual. And I said, I can still feel it. They're like, you can't possibly feel it because we did it right. And I said, no, I can feel it. So they're looking at the monitor, and every time the numbers go up, I'm screaming just as loud as the numbers are going higher. And they say, okay, we'll try to do it again. And so they gave me another epidural, a needle in my back, went in a second time, and it's the just the other just that. And I'm like, okay. And then I said, no. I can still feel the pain in my body. <laughs> I can still feel the pain in my body. And they said, what? The epidural is not working. This is unusual. We've never seen this not happen before. And I said, well, what's going on? Why me this time? Why is all this going on? All the while, my husband is standing over scared because he's trying to figure out what my baby's going to come out looking like and if he's really going to be healed or have this disease that they talk to us about. And now I'm going through all this pain. There's so much pressure in the room. Unusual things happen yes. in our lives. And so they said, well, we'll give you some different Demerol to knock off the edge. They gave me the Demerol, and they said, we have got to produce this baby because now the baby's heart rate is going down. So if you do not deliver this baby the regular way, we're going to have to do a C-section. Never had a surgery before. I said, absolutely not. I'm in pain. I don't want my baby 
to suffer any longer. I mean, maybe you suffered already. I'm not really sure. Can you do something different? So the nurse said, okay, then. Okay, listen. I'm going to tell you something that I don't usually tell anybody. So you know how you have a baby the regular way. You leave your spiritual hats on and think about that, okay? She said, we're going to flip this thing. And we're going to do something different. We're going to do something unusual because if you don't have this baby within the next hour, we're going to have to cut you open. And I said, what, 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 who, when, when? <laughs> I had experienced something like this before. She said, if you want to have this baby, this is what you got to do. So I did. And she said, okay, the doctor came in and said, it's time to push. I pushed about three times and the baby was born and my baby did not have Down syndrome. Somebody shall call it. But it caused an unusual occurrence in my life to produce a promise that I never would have received had I terminated number one. Because I didn't see spiritually what he was trying to show. Oh, so Jesus did the unusual thing and he spat on the ground, on the dirt. The dirt, I believe, apostle represents the dirt that man was initially created from. So he used something that he was initially created from because when he was initially created, he was predestined to be somebody. Wow. And then he made mud and clay and put it on the man's eyes. I don't know about y'all, but I'm OCD. So had I saw him coming to me with some dirt in my eyes, I'd have been like, what? No, I'm good. But the man was blind, so he had no choice but to stand there and allow Jesus to do what he was going to do. Amen. Amen. He was blind in the natural. We got our spiritual blinders on, and so we duck it and dodge it because we don't understand what he's showing in the spirit because we're not there. We only see it in the physical. But God says you got to get dirty. We're, we're talking about doing things unusual. You want things different to happen in your life, but you're like Naaman was, and you started whining and complaining when he came and gave you the unusual answer to how to get your hip. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so this man didn't whine and complain. And then after he used the spit and the dirt to put it on his eyes, let me notice this. Um, he used the reverse. Remember I said my doctor told me I had to flip some stuff? He used the reverse thing because they say the things that our research says that normally spit and dirt in the eyes causes blindness. Yes. So Jesus took that thing and did something unusual wow. and prepared the man to get ready to see. Some of you right now have already been hearing some unusual instructions. Some of you have already been hearing some unusual things that's causing you to become shaky in your spirit. Um, I talked to someone before, and they're like, my inside just keeps shaking all the time. Yeah, because he's shaking some stuff up, because you can no longer walk this walk the same way you walked it before. I had three children. I could not have carried Jacob the way I carried the other ones. It was impossible because I was carrying something that was precious to God. <laughs> carrying something now that's precious to him as far as the ministry that needs to be birthed. You're carrying something precious now that cannot be delivered the way you delivered before. I know your testimony about changing the church name, and that was something unusual. You never thought you'd have to do that. But it doesn't look like what you saw before. Not because it's not God's promise and it will not manifest itself, but because he's wanting to show people that if they come up become uncomfortable and accept the things of God, which never brings us comfort, <laughs> then they can have everything that he's promised them to have. So the next thing that he did was, he said, okay, go wash your eyes. Wow. So 9.30, and I still gotta go do something else? You mean to tell me, did you not go open my eyes after you put all this stuff on me? I still gotta go do some stuff? Why? Because we walk by faith and not by sight. And faith without works is what? Yeah. Um, okay. Faith without works is dead. And so he stretched the man's faith. Because remember, he couldn't see what he was doing no way. So he stretched the man's faith. The word doesn't say that he had help getting to the pool. Mm. That's right. The word doesn't say that he, he, he knew how to get there. You know, some people are blind and so they know the familiarities of the area and they start moving because they know how to get around. It doesn't say that he knew how to get there. What it did say, though, is that he went. And God wants you to go no matter if you got to stumble or bump into some stuff. He needs you to go now. Somebody shout, go now. Go now. You got to live under the umbrella of the unusual. He wants you to go no matter if you fall. Brandon talked about ministry. Brandon talked about failure last week. But this time, this won't be a failure. You're just falling trying to get to where he's taking you to. <laughs> You're going to get back up again as you go. Because it's your faith being increased. And it's your faith that's being stretched to do the unusual thing that he's never told you to do before. You got to go. You gotta go. You gotta go. And so he went and he washed. And the last verse said, and he came back seeing. And what I want you to hear tonight 
is that this word is likened to the spit and the mud on your spiritual blinded eyes. And if you would allow the altar or this place and this atmosphere to be the fullest alone and wash what he's already put on you that felt uncomfortable. Surrender, wash, surrender, surrender. Let it all go, let the things that you're familiar with go. <laughs> let, let how you want things to work go. Let how you think it should happen go. It's, you're so confused and frustrated because you're not being fulfilled because you're not doing it the right way. Mm. We think the right way makes sense, but with God, the right way always means something crazy got to go on. Mm. So he wants you to wash and surrender tonight. He wants you to let it go and let God, that's what the song says. Because once you come back seeing then people gonna ask you, how that happened? <laughs> how, how did you do that? You the one that was born this way. <laughs> you the one that can only go but so far. Once you get there, you ain't going no further. But how how this happened? How now do you have this burning new sight and things have changed and turned for the better in your life? When 2016 enters, people gonna say, what? You mean to tell me that you were on your way to be evicted, but now you're living in a five bed of she kind of little old shy, a five bedroom home. But you stay and you got perfect peace and nothing frustrates you or hinders you the way it's done before. Who did this to you? My Lord, my Lord. And you'll be able to testify and say, This is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in my eyes because I accepted the unusual <laughs> in my life. I began living under the umbrella of the unusual in my life. And once you become comfortable with doing the unusual, you'll never, ever, ever have to fear again. Will it get harder? Absolutely it's going to get harder. The matter of fact, when um, I heard the guy said that I was going to be, he was going to do some unusual things, that next Saturday, worship apostle laid hands on me and said, um, you're about to be elevated and God is about to surprise you. And I was like, what? I was scared. <laughs> what? Not because I didn't think titles, but I just know any type of promotion in the spirit means hell on wheels. I know that any type of thing that God wants to bless me with means I'm going to have to press so hard to get what it is that he's trying to pull out of me. I'm like, Lord, I'm already doing that again? <laughs> that's why I'm saying you got to live under the umbrella of the unusual. Because in 2016, when somebody says, go do this and go do that, or let this go, or do that wrong, you'll be like, all right, I'm good. I understand because this is my life. Your life is not your own. Your life is not your own. And you've got to get comfortable doing the unorthodox things. Does that make sense? Can you stand on your feet? I'm done. You've got to live under the umbrella of the unusual. You've got to get comfortable in knowing that things that you think should go one way may go in a whole other way. The opposite way we played one on last night. There's a reverse card, everyone you know. So in Christ, he's reversing stuff. His instructions always seem to be reversed. <laughs> Takes you back to push you forward. You follow me? Takes you back to push you forward. Causes you to lose the thing that you are holding on to, thinking that you could not make it without it. Causes you to give up some of the comfortable things that you did to try to numb the pain of the hurt that you were experiencing. It causes you to sacrifice all the more, surrender all the more, so that you can become the walking billboard as this blind man was. And begin seeing things spiritually so that you don't become afraid any longer. Did that help anybody? Yeah. I want to do something a little bit different if you don't mind. I want you to get a place, I know we've already done the altar, but I want you to find a place in the building, away from your seat, in an unusual spot that you've never been in before. And I want you to just get ready to pour your heart out to God and say, yes, Lord, I'm willing to accept the unusual. As uncomfortable as it seems, I know that I've been in this thing too long, and I know that I can't go any further until I say yes to the unusual process. I hear people say all the time, do it scared? No, I don't want you to do this thing scared because fear is not of God. I want you to do this thing with faith and I want you to hear the instructions clearly 
so that you will never have to feel the pain that you're feeling right now any longer. You're holding on to a baby on the inside of you that you should have been given birth to. Nine months have expired. How long are you going to hold on to the baby on the inside? You're going to produce a stillbirth if you don't say yes to the unusual process. I need you to get into a place of surrender. This place, this spot that you've chosen is like the pool of Siloam. The spiritual blindness is coming off tonight. The spiritual blindness is coming off tonight. You've been hearing things, but you've not been able to fully see it in the spirit, so you have not moved. But the spiritual blinders are coming off tonight. The spiritual blinders, even for the children, yes, children, the spiritual blinders are coming off tonight. You'll be a greater witness in your schools and amongst your friends. No matter how much they ridicule you for being different, you got to get the spiritual blinders off of you at your pool of salon, right where you are. And say, Lord, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to accept the unusual call that you have on my life, and I'm going to do this thing to the glory of God. The spiritual blinders must come off. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Yes, Lord. I want to see you. Do whatever you need to do. Say whatever you need to say. Open the eyes. 